edition of Joelful in the Ring. And yes, my name is Frank Joelful, and this right here is Kyle the Spoiler Morn. What's going on, Kyle? I'm not Jeremy Prophet. That's what's going on. What's your name? <laughs> my name? <laughs> my name is uh, Selecta Brew. <laughs> so we're doing a great review uh, tonight, and uh, it's Royal Rumble season. It is Royal. So, is there going to be a Royal Rumble this year? Uh, they got the day one pay per view coming in out. January. Yeah, I heard. Not in, usually it's in December. No, it's always in January. Always in January, but in the beginning of January, I think. Now I think it's going to be at the end of January. There's no cert, There's no set date uh, right now. But what I've heard, there's going to be in January. I don't know if it's the beginning or at the end. But the build up, no build up yet so far. No build up. But we're going to get all these fans here excited about the Royal Rumble. With our review here, the 1992 Royal Rumble, probably one of my favorites of all time. Definitely a great one. We all know who wins. We all know who loses. But we're going to let you know what happens in, in this event. Let's get into the action. So, opening match, decent match. Yeah. Probably fucking a little, went on a little too little too long for my, uh, for my liking. Between you and me, it, it was, it was uh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> So, so you remind me of the blood hunter this guy you know what i have that written down on my notes i'm like it's owen hart versus the blood hunter right yeah. now and he's teaming up with jim the anvil nightheart and pajama pete back there yeah who showed up in his pajamas they're managed by uncle uh mr Fu i was gonna call him uncle fuji mr fuji pre fuji dust yeah he's got the cane dust. he's got the bowler hat he looks like odd job from golden eye yeah the game not the movie Fuck off. I know what I'm talking about. And yeah, it's just a weird match because that's the Blood Hunter. He's wrestling the Blood Hunter. You the think blood. we could ever get him on the show? The Blood Hunter. I'm, I have he asked, scares I even me. asked to uh, to uh, get uh, his his manager as well, Blaze. But uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe one day. Because uh, I want to know what it was like wrestling Owen Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal's favorite wrestler, by the way. That is Hannibal's favorite wrestler. But they were called they weren't called the Hart Foundation. What were they called? The New Foundation. Yes. yes. And like look at the fucking pants they were wearing though. Like it's, it's, 92, it's wild. Right? Like look at Jim the Anvil. Jim the Anvil looked like when he was shopping for new gear, he went up to like his seamsters and was just like, Give me the Aladdin. But is this this is this is like um this is wrestling attire that Owen Hart Owen Hart. I never. I don't remember Jim the Anvil Nightheart being in this wrestling attire. So I had the action figure of Jim the Anvil Nightheart in that attire. So really? that's why it sticks out in my mind. Wow. He he was that crazy. one that had the arm that went like that went like this, and you yeah. could like extend it, and he fucking clothesline or punch you in the mouth. Okay. But yeah. So we got the Orient Express versus the New Foundation. We got Mister Fuji out there. They call him the devious one, just like our boy Ivan. Yeah. Exactly. Over at Circle of Debate. Is that where you got that name from? Ooh, Is that where you fuck? You think you're gonna there. fucking I go away for a while and come back? You think you're gonna start throwing pulling shit over? Oh no, 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 no. I came back to prove. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so right now we got the anvil, pajama Pete. I don't know his name. I don't care what his name no, is. At this point, yeah. It's just they're they're gonna go at it, and it's Jim the Anvil. He's a fucking powerhouse, but uh but nothing led to this for for Owen Hart and and Jimmy Allen after no. this, right? It's not like they got they had tag team title opportunities. They were tag team champions. I don't think so. I don't know. I, I'm asking you because no. I know you would know more more than me. No, they uh, just kind of floundered. I'm just kind of floundered. Nothing happened. Yeah, because so, I, I, was this before or after they stuck Owen with fucking Coco Beware? Wow, you're asking the wrong guy. That uh, you're 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 that guy. Yeah, I should know that. <laughs> you but... should know that. But, anyways. Good match overall. Good tag team match. Owen Hart gets the pin in what's possibly the longest match I've ever seen. Well, for, for an opening match, you would think, okay, fine. But then you have the Royal Rumble after. So I guess it, it's it sucks to say, but it was a filler match, right? To get to the Royal Rumble, right? Yeah. Because the big match was the Royal Rumble. It wasn't a, an ordinary Royal Rumble. The winner gets the, the WWE, the W, sorry, the WWF title WWE didn't now. exist yet so. not yet yeah. not yet. Oh. so up next we got the intercontinental title now okay. the, before the, we get to that i have a question for you because they made a point in the interview well not in this interview in the match before to mention that marty janetti 
would not be participating in the Royal Rumble. Why was that? They said due to contusions. I think it's crack. <laughs> <laughs> Very good chance you were right there, Kyle. <laughs> Very good. Chance. Might have been crack. Anyways, up next we got the Mountie, friend of the show, friend of the show, friend of the show, Jacques Rougeau, friend of the show. I'm trying to get him into the Hall of Fame. We want him in the Hall of Fame. He deserves to be in the yeah. Hall of Fame. He's got Luth Academy coming up. It's a huge fucking thing. If you don't know about it, educate yourselves. Yeah. JacquesRougeau.ca or um, there's links at the bottom of the description. Check it out. Big opportunity for any Canadian wrestlers in Canada, obviously, uh, to make it to maybe AW, get a tryout at the, at the Nightmare Factory with QT Marshall, and uh, maybe meet that piece of crap. Cody Rhodes, but that's another story. I heard you're actually going to audition just so you can get a chance to go to the Nightmare Factory. Imagine that. So you can just attack Imagine that. Cody Rhodes. Imagine that. But uh, no, I wish. I wish. If I, if I wasn't getting uh, the surgery on my knee, which I'm getting very soon. Um, Damn you, Cody. I, I Honestly, I would just for just for a laugh. Because <laughs> imagine that. Frank Jofo goes to, the, goes to the, the Nightmare Factory with Jacques Rougeau as his manager. That would never happen. Maybe 20 years ago in the LWF. If Lamar Brawler comes out of retirement. But let's get back to the action. Back to the action. <laughs> okay, so we got Sean Mooney. Should should be in the Hall of Fame. I tweeted about that. I don't know why he's not. It's ridiculous. But we got the Mountie, Intercontinental Champion, beat Bret Hart, who had a fever. But I think because I've met Jacques Rougeau. You've met Jacques yeah. Rougeau. He's a huge guy. I think he didn't bigger need... than I Bigger than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. Huge. Yeah. And now... This is him 20 years younger, yeah. 30 years younger. In shape and everything. But the thing, the thing the is. The guy, did you see his arms, though? He was huge. The thing is, if I'm not mistaken, it was January 17th, if I'm not mistaken, 1992. He fought Bret Hart, beat him for the title, and then they canceled the match or they gave him the, they gave up the title after. If, if I'm not mistaken, because. I think Bret actually was injured, though, because he wasn't even in the Rumble. Okay, because. Jacques Rougeau wins the Intercontinental title, mm. and then he loses. Two, it was I think it was two days before the Royal Rumble. I believe, mistaken. I believe, it, yeah, I believe it was. So basically, he he was a, he was the Intercontinental champion for two days. But what a two day reign, though, right? <laughs> what a two day reign! Fantastic reign. You know what, though, honestly, the, between you and me, maybe between you and me and the internet, yeah. Well, <laughs> walking into a Royal Rumble, I think that's. That's that's a, a feat on itself. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Man, I don't know. Just, that's just me. That's just me. I, walking in without the title, ah, whatever. But if you're the if you're the champion walking into a major pay per view, I'm sure the big bucks are there for that. Oh, too, I'm right? sure so, he got uh, got so, a new mounty suit. Yeah. Got a new saddle for his horse, maybe. And I remember the the the, the promos for this. These guys were off on each other. Two great wrestlers as well, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a great match as well. Um, there's a part in this interview where Piper says something, and then Mean Gene just goes, "Whoop! <laughs> all right, <laughs> back to ringside." <laughs> a lot of gibberish was 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 talked uh, back in the day in the promos because they were all fucked up, anyways. Half yeah, of them. we didn't even know half of the, half of what they were saying, and then they were just like, <laughs> and it was just like. Well, back to you, a gorilla and uh, Bobby. And that's another thing. Probably the greatest announcement, announcement, announcing team in the history of announcing. Yeah. Maybe not the, these matches, the, the, the preliminary matches, to, uh, the build-up to the Royal Rumble, but when we get to the Royal Rumble, we'll talk about it more, but Gorilla Monsoon. Bobby, Bobby the Brain. The brain in, it, in their prime, going at it. Back and forth bickering like me and Bruno do, you know, like oh, there was no but there's no touching Bobby the Brain back then. That's they're probably my number two all time announced team. And did you notice he didn't come in with the he didn't come in with it? Nope, but some random song. Piper got his bagpipes though. Yeah, of course, of course it is. Piper looked like a million bucks though, eh? You know what? That's the steroids probably because no, this was ninety two. It didn't seem like he was a. A guy that went to the gym and, and pumped iron and, and eat eat well and yeah and he was do do steroids do drugs and do movies do movies and 
and now he's fuck. It's yeah. a pirate's life for me. I tell yeah, you that. That sucks, man. What a match, though, eh? Yeah, what a match. What a match. Like he get they get in there. <clears throat> Piper takes off his uh, kilt. I almost called it a skirt. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> Sorry, Scotland. Didn't mean to break your heart. Um, and the Mountie almost gets him with the taser. <laughs> now, listen. I've had Jacques Rougeau in my face with a taser. Yeah. It's a scary sight. Yeah. Yeah. He one handed me out of that chair. Yeah. He one handed me. <laughs> and he just met you. So imagine and he, he just met you. Actually, me. knew, he knew you a bit, hated you like he did Roddy Roddy Piper here in this match. Would have been a whole different story. But, you, you know, when I was watching this uh, this match and they were interviewing Jacques Rougeau backstage, I was like, oh, is that me? Because he was in the full <laughs> mounting. <laughs> But yeah, overall, good match. But uh, our boy Roddy Piper, he pulls it off. He, yeah, he, he pulled it off. I would have liked to have seen Jacques Rougeau uh, retain the title, but uh, like I said, um, I have to check the history books. But for to me, giving him the title, and he beat Bret Hart at that event, right? He beat Bret Hart. Beats Bret Hart. Two days later, loses to Roddy Piper. So maybe they just wanted to give it to Roddy Piper. Well, and they he was just the uh, the casualty in the middle. Well, they set that up, I think, because going into WrestleMania eight, it was Piper versus Bret Hart for the Intercontinental okay, title. So the Mountie was just I think he might have just been a placeholder just to get the title, kind of like how the Miz won the WWE title. And then uh, was it Bobby Lashley took yeah. it off of him the next night. I think it was kind of like that. But which is. I mean, it's good because you're getting the title, but yes. at the same time, it's also a Jacques Rougeau. And I think they kind of rewarded him afterwards because he met up with uh, our other good friend, PCO. Pierre Carwellette. But the thing is, not, not, well, this is for another day. But I was thinking when I was watching this, and I'm like, now I could see where the animosity and the disdain and the and being mad at Vince McMahon and WWE on, on Jacques Rougeau's part because... They were probably promising him all this glorious stuff. Beat Bret Hart, walk into Royal Rumble thinking, okay, I'm not going to lose it in two days. Yeah. Lose it in two days to Roddy Piper, which he probably knew was probably doing an eight ball a night. Then, you know what I mean? <laughs> like him or not, you know what I mean? Whatever. He's doing steroids. And it's I don't not know if Jacques Rougeau was doing steroids. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. No, you know, I don't think so. But just to say, you know, and I think it the Mounties sucks. match got cut at WrestleMania too. It seems like all these matches get that, cut and everything <clears throat> screws up. And you know, but yeah. that's for another day. Well, maybe we'll do a, a special Jacques Rougeau uh, legacy uh, video. Yeah, you know, enough of this. You screwed Brett. You screwed Jacques. Well, in the end, you know, that's another Canadian that got put him in the here. fucking Hall of Fame yeah, with Sean Mooney. The Mountie H O F Hall of Fame hashtag. Yes. Anyways. So, um, good match though. I always like watching Piper wrestle. And what's this guy's name again? The referee. Uh, let's see him. Who was it? Joey Morella or something. Was like it that? Joey Morella? That's the same guy that I uh, remember when um, we had James on, and he was talking about the main event with um, British Bulldog and Bret Hart. Yeah. And he said that that was one of his favorite rest, uh, wrestlers. It's one of his favorite referees was Joey Morella. That was, that was uh, the one, and he ended up dying in a car crash. It's Gorilla Monsoon's son. For real, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I know. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's cool. That's what I'm here for. I like to leave little, <laughs> little nuggets of knowledge right so there. So the winner and the new Intercontinental Champion. Hot Rod, and now he's going into the Rumble, and he's going for the belt. That was the thing. He wanted to win, he wanted to win two titles that night. And I think, First ever title. Yeah. And I think it's uh, that and the tag titles were the only titles he's ever had. Okay, there's a guy who should have been a champion. That's another. Uh, that's another uh, good point because he's never won a, a major. Well, but besides the continental title, tag call it a major. Tag M mind you, he won it with Rick. Okay, so Flair. I'm saying, let's yeah. say the heavyweight title. He should have won Not that. Even in WCW, he won it. No. Wow. There's so many guys that should have won that what title. Shame. It's almost as if we can make a list out of it. Yeah. Oh my God. What is, what is that? Was that? Was that, a, was that a seed? Oh, there he is. Was that a seed? Oh, there he is. Lord Alfred Hayes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who's he? Who? Who is that? What's? Whose who's room is he walking into? I can't see. I got oh, terrible eyes. Oh, there he is. Oh, whose room is that, brother? <laughs> see right there. You can tell right now. Vince McMahon is in a steroid scandal, <laughs> just by the size of the twenty-two inch pythons. But. The next match, I'm not going to lie to you, 
wasn't my favorite. No, it was the Bushwhackers oh, versus yes. the Beverly Brothers. Yes, and they had I don't know what was it their brother, their uncle, that their, their lawyer with the glasses there. And- what was his name? I wrote it down. The Bushwhackers with Jameson versus the Beverly Brothers, who would have in their corner another friend of the show, Lanny Poffo. Lanny Poffo, the genius. <laughs> Not so much a friend because he unfriended uh, Hannibal and uh, and Jeremy Prophet, but uh, that's for uh, that's not that's none of our business. But uh, you guys figure it out amongst yourselves. But it would be nice business. to get to get him on the show, uh, Lanny Pavel, brother of the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Yep, and uh, I'm sure he has a lot of stories from back in the day, but. He, he was probably, a weird wrestler. He was a though. weird. He he's a, a weird looking guy too. He had a weird beard. I know that Jim Cornette always used to make fun of him because the way he talks and he thinks he's a professor. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, he'd come out and he's like, I have a poem to read. <laughs> but that's how he always, like, is that how he talks in, that? that's how he talks in real life. Is that his, like, you think it's his speaking voice? Because even when he's interviewed, he's still kind of in character a bit. Like, I don't know, when man. they showed those he's A&E. A weird guy, man. He's a weird looking guy. I understand. Guy. <laughs> Anyways. That's for another thing, but oh, so yeah, uh, the fucking bushwhackers they wrestled the Beverly Brothers. Uh, the genius slapped Jameson halfway through this, uh, halfway through the match. He didn't look like he appreciated it. And then the whackers they won the match and then they cleared house afterwards. Overall, classic bushwhackers. You got the I, whole... I remember hearing a boring in this match too, as well. Um, it definitely it, there it wasn't, def- um. There wasn't what do you call those matches? Uh, the the um, fillers, the no, not the filler matches. The um, pop uh, bathroom break. The, the, the ma- yeah, the bathroom break. But the one before it actually starts. Well, they had no women wrestling yet. The pre-show. So, yeah, the pre-show. This would have been a good the pre-show kickoff. match. The kickoff. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that wasn't even invented yet. And they weren't having divas Technically. matches yet, so guys were sitting there like, yeah. Oh, the fucking whackers are coming! Up. I gotta go take a piss. But you would think, okay, you know what? If, if I would have bought a ticket to this event so far. I would have been happy with the result of Roddy Piper, you know. So exactly, we don't have that. You have a Royal Rumble that, for the first time ever, someone's going to be crowned the WWF champion. So at this point, let's go to the bathroom. Maybe go smoke a joint in the bathroom. Get some nachos. We'll be able to go outside at the time uh, to go smoke a cigarette. Uh, you're probably smoking in there. Probably. Sw- you're probably. probably you're probably light up and just. Yeah. I'm really surprised. Wow, that's a good question. Just but, ash it in the old yeah. beer glass. Yeah. But the, the Beverly Brothers were like the, the typical uh, bad guy tag team, you know? But okay. nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can say that. Right <laughs> I mean, look at the hair. I mean, I know it's the fucking 90s and all, but like, fix your mullet. <laughs> Just fix your mullet. But all right. So the Whackers win. Up next, we got the Legion of Doom versus the Natural Disasters, a.k.a. Trax and Tico. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You know what I always loved about the LOD match is the promo before the match because it's all tell them, Hawk. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Love it. Well, promo wise, oh, untouchable, untouchable. Especially and, for and you had to go after Bushwhacker, so just literally, literally eliminated. It's like, you know what? Now that you think of it. They shouldn't even have had this tag team match right after. They should have had a tag team match first. Then the singles match with Jacques Rougeau and uh, and uh, Piper. Roddy Piper. And then have this. You have back-to-back tag team matches? To be fair, though, it's because there's no title match on the line that night. There's okay. no, there's no, And there's no women's title yet. No. And the WWF title is in the Rumble. Okay. And I guess, you know, if you're going to follow like a, like a dud Bushwhacker match, you want the fucking Road Warriors. Look you want the, the Legion of, of that Ham Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking Jimmy Hart, that Jimmy turn coach. Just managed duty. everyone. <laughs> Triple duty. How many people you think he's got in that rumble, bastard? Oh, I'd love God. to get him on the show. He actually follows me on Facebook. Does he really? Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, you want to come on the show? Come on, Jim. Jim. <laughs> James. <laughs> James Buchanan Hart. I don't know if that's his middle name, but so I, do you do you think um do you think like between between you and me and that, well naturally I, I I'm a big fan of Earthquake. I loved Earthquake. So 
to me, I think they could have did a lot more with him, but yeah, he was the the self proclaimed big guy of the WWF, like a Braun Strowman, uh, you know, like typical guy like that. You know, he, he was quick; big... he could move, but he was quick, yes, yeah, and he was good on the mic too, as well. Same thing with he really didn't need Jimmy Harden in, in this in this. Uh, no, maybe but maybe just for the antics on the outside there with the. Hey, come on, baby! What are you doing there, baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has Jimmy Hart ever uh, managed the Legion of Doom? No, no. They've only had uh, they've had Sonny the and Ellering. Paul Ellering. Paul Ellering, yeah. Okay. But what a fucking pop they got every single time, eh? They were so over. Well, like uh, Godfrey say, over like Grover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh man, yeah. This was a hell of a match. Um, <laughs> just powerhouses, though. Well, like just and you got Legion of Doom. That's a fan favorite. Uh, they were they were a running gun kind of, kind of team. Pushed stiff, it, stiff bullies. They know to bully you around. And then you had the ultimate bullies, the natural disasters, earthquake and typhoon. So tugboat. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, it, wasn't, it was typhoon. But remember typhoon? when he was tugboat? Yeah. I had the action. I had the action figures for the natural disasters, both <laughs> of them. And I love how they had to put in their guts on the toy. Like they just got these fat drums just hanging there, oh, just like straight, like, <laughs> like, like no abs, but just like no, just like a, like a plastic toy belly. Well, <laughs> look at that, eh? What a monster earthquake Earl was! Ender. Just towering over Hawk and Animal. Wow, look at yeah, but you would they, think okay, like Hawk, Hawk was a big guy too. Hawk he, was a monster. Animal was a bit shorter. Well, not yeah. that much, I guess. Yeah, but a bit smaller. But Animal was smaller, kind of but he was fucking. Guys. Like the neck on that guy. Look at the size of earthquake. And you typhoon, could eat man. soup out of his clavicle. Holy moly, man! Yeah, they're fat. There, they are some big boys. <laughs> Who do you think is going to start that match? Tracks or Tico? <laughs> I think it looks like Tico here. <laughs> I'm going to grow a hawk mohawk like that. All right, I need that. I need that in my life. Well, I remember when you when you said it last time when you said that their their haircuts are um, like they're in one and one. Like yeah, you had hawk. That had the side, Sides. and then yeah, an animal had the middle. And I never noticed that until you said it, which yeah. is pretty crazy. And not only that, not you only look at it now, it's like okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. If, if that was the reason, you think it was done purposely or uh, yeah, it was they, accidentally? They said it on, I think it was, uh, might have been Dark Side of the Ring, but uh, Animal said it. Okay, he had like some kind of, and the worst part is he had like the ponytail too, so it was like a mohawk yeah. mullet. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, love that. Yeah. It's a it's a power game here with these with these two teams. Yeah. But anything, anything significant that happened in this match? I, I don't really remember this match. Uh, what happens at the end? What's going on? Well, the LOD won. LOD won. Okay. Yeah, they're not uh, losing those titles anytime soon. But uh, I think after this, though, the natural disasters they turned uh, face because I remember they feuded with Money Inc for a while. Okay. But oh. uh, natural disasters won. Oh, they did win. What did I... I had it written down... Uh... Oh, wait, no, sorry. You know what? I read the wrong note. Because look what I have here. Fatties win by DQ. <laughs> I got it right there. Fatties win by DQ. All right, so, so we'll... as we all know... So I'll go... Okay, wait. So what happened in this match? <laughs> oh, I thought, well, we could have just kept it that. It would have been funnier. But uh, the, uh, the, the, the fatties win by DQ. Oh, it was by disqualification. And as you and I both know, titles can't change hands on the disqualification. Okay, so they okay, so they just they were just grabbing the titles as uh, as heels then. Yeah, because remember back then it was like, oh, they won. Yeah. Even though they've been in the business for God knows how long, they yeah. still have to pretend that they're stupid. Yeah. yeah which yeah. makes zero fucking sense to yeah. me. That's the WWF way, though. That's how it was, though, right? To make everyone remember, there was there's no internet in 1992. No. no. So they were basically telling us what to think and what to say and what to there may have know. been the cfcf 12 hotline though <laughs> yeah, that you were on so that's why nobody could uh, <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> i used to call that the line is busy yeah kyle's on okay yeah. and, th and then what happened <laughs> then what happened yeah yeah what is it was i like calling a sex chat for nerds Imagine that that production <laughs> meeting in the back okay so you guys are not gonna win but you're gonna pretend you win with the titles and everything and the whole thing is to get the, the steel chairs off the yeah. bat off the back do you think that steel chair would have really hurt Earthquake for him to drop the title and just walk away? He didn't even just, swing it, though. Like, he know, just like, ran into it. But, like, can you imagine pitching that? Like, all right, guys, you're going to win the title. You're going to win the match by DQ. Yeah. You're going to celebrate with the titles. But 
then the LOD is just going to come in and kick the shit out of you with a chair. Oh, oh yeah, so, sounds good. So How much far, am I getting paid again? So far, the only title change is to our boy, Jacques Rougeau, here. I, 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 I can literally see it. Now I'm I'm understanding more and more why he was so pissed off at Vince man. God damn it. Yeah. Vinny no. Mac, what were you doing, man? So now we got Sean Mooney backstage. And again, why isn't he in the Hall of Fame? That's that's a good question. Someone was asking me, he's like, oh, what would you think of um like one year they do just like jobbers? Yeah. Is the brawler in there? Brawler's not in there. The Brooklyn Brawler is not in there. How does how does Goldberg get into the Hall how of Fame? How is Drew Carey in the role, in the in in the Hall of Fame? How is fucking Goldberg in there how before the Brooklyn Rose Brawler in the, in the Hall of Fame? How is Donald Trump in the Hall of Fame? But Jacques Rougeau. How is Coco Beware in there? I don't get it. I don't get it. Bef- before the Brooklyn Brawler or <clears throat> Jacques Rougeau. How is the earthquake not in there? That's a scary sight right there. That is a scary <laughs> sight. I feel like um, that's the kind of view like his food gets in his <laughs> oven when he's peeking through that window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do to you when you I get out of here? The light just went off. And it's, <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> What's going on? Are my cookies ready yet? <laughs> I'm going to get you, Hogan. <laughs> and there they are. Bobby D, two greatest announced team duo right here. Yeah. Gorilla Monsoon, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan. The back and forth, because oh, it's fantastic. Bobby Rahe was a Ric Flair guy, far and true. There was nobody else. He was a Ric Flair guy all the way, and Gorilla Monsoon was that typical Jim Ross, good uh, guy, good guy. But but screw you, Bobby the Brain. But he came from a wrestling background. He was a wrestler yes. first, so he so could it, it helped his persona, it helped his character exactly in a sense, right on on the commentary. And he was always right down the middle. <laughs> If somebody did something sketchy, yeah, I always liked him and Bobby, uh, not Bobby Heen. I always liked the uh, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse the Body together. Do you think um, uh, Mean Gene Oakland knew these guys were doing steroids or doing drugs or they were alcoholics and stuff like that? Oh, absolutely, guaranteed. Eh? Mean Gene was probably an alcoholic too. He, well, you well after watching the Legends House, you could tell he was. A, what well, huge guy had a mark. He's an old man, he, can, he earned it. Yeah, he, he exactly. He, he earned earned wasn't it. a type of guy like, like this. Like he wasn't he, two different characters, right? On on Legends House and and here, right? Like it's all business. Here, yeah, right? he always had a martini in his hand. Yeah, so he paid his dues because you can see Roddy Piper here, Roddy Piper and Legends House, two different guys. Obviously, we could tell with the the use of. What kind of uh, recreational drug or anything Oof. alcoholic he was doing? The fun stuff. The fun stuff. The fun stuff. I'll be a joint, but anyway. I mean, sometimes anyway. you need a you need a J. All right, so we got Sean Mooney. They're doing the interviews after the rumble. Before the rumble, they're interviewing everybody. I like that. That was a classic. Uh, that was a classic yeah. move by WWE. I remember that. Yeah, they used to do that. They used to do it for Survivor Series too. Yes. Would yes. they all get together? Oh, there he is. Oh, the heartbreak kid. Just the, you know what? I, this was just around the time that he super kicked Martin Gennetti as well. It was like right after, yeah, it was right after, right? Eh? And that's uh, I think that's why he had the contusions because he, he put him through the barbershop window. He knew he was going to be something good, man. Oh, of course, the talent. He had the whole the whole package, the whole package. I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> Gennetti tried to dive through the window. <laughs> See, if you guys. <laughs> Pause this. Go and watch Shawn Michaels kicking Marty Jannetty th- in the face and then putting him through the window. <laughs> but listen to Bobby the Brain's commentary. Yeah. Because yeah. right away, he's just like, you know what? You can't have one without the other. They're a team. They need. And then he hits him. He's like, oh, I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> and then he rams his face through the window. And all you hear is Bobby the Brain. Jannetty tried to dive through the window. <laughs> Uh, oh, would you shut up, yeah. Brain? <laughs> <laughs> they were so good, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain. They were so good. Oh, they were the best. Oh, man. So, te- so- and like even his promo right yeah. there, it sounds like like it's still a little needs a little work. He's I not would've... he's not the Shawn Michaels that no, we no, all know and but love, it... but but he's fucking almost there. Well, from 1992, if you look at it from 92 to now, you'd say like, wow, look at what Shawn Michaels accomplished. Because of throwing Martin Jenny through that window. Well, Martin Jenny threw himself through the window. He tried to escape. Tried to escape. Tried to, you know he, what I mean. he didn't <laughs> want another super kick. <laughs> but, but just to see where he came and everything. One Royal Rumbles, Mr. WrestleMania, all the accolades. 
titles galore. You know, so kudos to him. He grabbed that 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 brass ring and he ran with it. Oh, you know, so he fucking took it and just never looked back. Speaking about the brass ring, Mister Brass Ring himself. So here's a funny story. Here's something funny that I I noticed that I just thought of today. Ric Flair wins the world title in the Royal Rumble. Okay. The second time that happens, who won it? Triple H. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow, like, man. This this guy just he wants to be Ric Flair so bad. He even had a heart attack. It's true, eh? Oh, we yeah. all hope Triple H is okay. I'm sure he is. He's yeah, I'm fine. sure he's he the is. game. We see all the Listen. rumors that are going around that he wants to open up his own thing and everything. It's it's a little, I don't know, I think a little too far fetched. Triple H leaving to go open his own federation oh, against Vince McMahon. That's an awkward Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, exactly, I exactly. I don't know who came up. With How's that. work, Hunter? Dave Meltzer, <laughs> one of those idiots there, and uh, and Mark Land there, but. Jesus Christ, come on, man. Oh, Dave Meltzer's not going to comment on that. He's too busy blowing the young bucks. <laughs> oh, 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 you guys got a seven and a half star match. Oh, fuck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> Fucking putts. Back to the action. Back to the action. Back to the action. There he is. Fuck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> the Macho Man Randy Savage. Now, at the final four of this Royal Rumble is a who's who. Somebody else who should be in the Hall of Fame who's not. Sid Justice. Wow. Sid Vicious, a.k.a. Psycho Sid. Has been on Hannibal TV many times. And who I've messaged, and you have an open invite on the show, sir. You're more than welcome. <laughs> I got lots of questions for you. Who? So we have Psycho Sid in one corner. We have the Macho Man in the other corner. We have Ric Flair. And we got Hulk Hogan. And it was pretty intriguing, too, because you would think, okay, Okay, I'm 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 talking more like nowadays where you, you see those typical guys that start off in the Royal Rumble and they stay till the end, maybe not win it, but they're like the guys that carry everybody. Yeah, you know, like Ric Flair would have probably did what Chris Jericho usually does in the Royal Rumble because he's never won one, right? But he always starts off in the number one, two, or three, and then always stays till the end and gets thrown out right before the, the final four, you know? Yeah, just to keep everyone going, right? So you had guys like Macho Man. Did Macho Man ever win a Royal Rumble? I don't think so. Maybe a Battle Royal. You know, just us thinking about got, it right now. He I, got I, to the last two in '93. No, it was, and he went for an elbow drop on Yokozuna, and, and then he, he went, went for a pin. He went for a pin in the Royal Rumble, even though he has been in them before. Didn't like it. I guess the uh, the the moral of the story is, kids, if you're in a Royal Rumble, do not go for a pin. You're going to throw your opponent over the top rope, but how in the hell is he going to throw Yokozuna over the top rope? Exactly. Exactly. That's for another day. That 93 Rumble, though, that was a good one. <laughs> it is. He had the dark horses of all dark horses here. The Repo the Man. The Repo Man. Repo Man. The British Bulldog. <laughs> we had all kinds of guys. You had some good guys. You had the Texas Tornado. Yep. Um, you had... Um, why is my mind going blank now? Well, we had the Texas Tornado. We had um, we had everybody in this match. I think we had Ted DiBiase. Oh yes, okay, Ted who, DiBiase, another yes. Iron Man in the Royal Rumble. If you go back and you watch the other ones, he's always going the distance. Or well, you always have those typical guys. Like nowadays, it's it's a Sami Zayn. Uh, before it was like Cody Rhodes. If you look in the records, is in the top ten of um, cumulative hours in a Royal Rumble. Really? Chris Jericho leads the way. And if you also look to the records, it'll say Cody Rhodes is a piece of shit. Oh, that's a, that's already a gimme. <laughs> that's already a gimme. That fucking, uh, anyways, uh, fucking what right. what was the gimme point of that? Uh, we're not I don't want to talk about dynamite because we got reviews for that. <laughs> but we're gonna just I'm gonna sprinkle the yeah, the, the yeah, AW sprinkle, review sprinkle. into this into this review and sure, just sure. be like were you were you just waiting for him to catch on fire? When he did that awful table spot with well, Andrade, uh, what was the point of that? Andrade hit when, his head on the on the table. And when that's Andrade, how he lost. What was the point of setting a table on fire if the guy you're gonna put through it doesn't go through the table? Yeah. Cody, you're not your dad. Stop it. Yeah, you're a poor man's Jeff Jarrett. And what's in when that's Brandy it. put? Uh, she sprayed too much, uh, too oh, much gasoline or whatever the hell that was. Fuck there. off. But the thing was is that I was watching that match, and then I go. 
you know what? I know what they're trying to do. I respect it as much as I hate Cody Rhodes. I understand what they're trying to do on a business standpoint, wrestling standpoint, right? But then I'm like, okay, he's going to come back. He's getting beat up. He's going to come back and he's going to win. But the way he won, minus the table, take the table out. It would have been it would have been okay. Um, make him pin Andrade clean. It would have made people hate Cody Rhodes even more. Now it's like, do you hate him because of the table spot, which had nothing to do with anything in, in the match? It's like I don't know, man. Yeah. Anyways, that's enough about Cody Rhodes. That's it. A little taste. Little little sprinkle, a little, little nugget for you guys. A little two point little, little, taste, which little, I'm, I'm actually I'm starting to like in AEW now. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of them when they were two point uh, ever rise uh, in uh, NXT, but now I'm pretty. I'm liking the, the two point yeah. now. Guys, you want a little on. taste? Little taste. All right. Most of the good friends of Matt Viviani too. So That's... Fernando. <laughs> um, back to the uh, Rumble. Yeah. Hogan was actually getting booed. Did you think Hulk? I, we all thought Hulk Hogan was going to win. Dude, it was the it was 90s. The, it was the 90s. It was the 90s. 92, I was nine years old. Fuck. 92, I was, I was, was nine years old. Six. Nine years old. Hulk Hogan's winning. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Not some schlup from fucking yeah. WWCW. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, no. But if you notice, not on the WWE version, though. I used to have the VHS tape of this pay-per-view. And yeah. when Hogan grabs Sid's hand and pulls him down, people started booing. Sid was getting cheered more than Hogan was. Sid was more over than, than Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Wow. He was and, starting and to get this, a little bit more over in than New York. If I'm, I'm not Madison Square Garden, uh, Hack and Sack or whatever, something like that in New York. But Kipsy? So it was something like that. One of those. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so to, to, for people to boo Hulk Hogan. Listen, in he was 92. He was on his way out, though. That uh, the say your private say your prayers, take your vitamins, and believe it in was yourself because that that generation already saw it enough, right? Exactly. Like Cody Rhodes, we're sick of you, Cody. Oh, Get yeah. off TV, see. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> oh, Cody. You know, I when I think of Cody. Anybody but Cody. That's for sure. <laughs> but overall, though, this was a good rumble. Like I said, from start to finish, then you even had Jack Tunney. And of course, Macho Man gets eliminated. Hogan gets eliminated. Ric Flair dumps out Sid after going what ninety minutes, sixty three minutes, something like that. Who? Ric Flair. Ric Flair went uh, over sixty. Uh, that I know because I remember there was a point where it was like sixty one minutes. I yes. think it was. So, so Bob, um, uh, Bobby Heenan. No, uh, Gorilla Monsoon goes. Ric Flair has just broken the record for time spent in the ring. And Bobby Reed goes, just give him the title. Just give it to him. He's the winner. He's the winner. Doesn't matter. It's like, just the back and forth of, of Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain. Like, I, I, I want to, I'm going to watch it again just for that. Yeah. Because it was the banter. You can't teach that, man. No, you can't absolutely not. Write that. You can't script that. That's just like, Back and forth, like go. Oh my god, man! And then when Ric Flair came out, he looked like a million bucks too. Looked like a million bucks. He was forty three years old. Fuck! I I checked it up. Forty three years old. I'm gonna be forty three in less than a decade. Okay. I am thirty eight years old. Right now in wrestling, you have forty year olds that look like garbage, and, and you got Ric Flair on the top of his game, winning a title in a big pay per view event. And he was in there. And it wasn't like he came in two seconds or he was in there for four minutes. No. He was in there for 60 plus minutes. And broke the record. And I'm pretty sure that record was previously held by Ted DiBiase. Unbelievable, man. No, it was Rick, uh, Rick, Rick Martell. Was, was it Rick Martell? Yeah. Another I great remember. Canadian. Another yeah. fucking Hall of Famer. Another, yeah, another Hall of Famer that's not in there. I met Rick, Rick Martell once. Really? Nice guy. I would love. Sweetheart to, of a human I being. I would love to. Uh, it was yeah. Jacques Rougeau. And Rick the Model Martel were my dad's fa two favorite wrestlers, and he loved them because they were bad guys, and I liked the good guys. So my dad always used to bust my balls. Yeah, you know. But it was the arrogance, and oh, man, yeah, I met him at a comic con, and he had the arrogance with him. Unbelievable, man! That's he shook crazy, my hand, man. and my hand disappeared into his. And then I met Ric Flair, and he was an asshole. Never meet your heroes, eh? That's Never meet your heroes. I, I met Hogan, and he was fantastic. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people say that Hogan is a piece of shit, but. 
what you told me, and not a couple to the other, fans. Uh, other of, of my friends that have told me that have met him. I go, okay. Well, uh, to be all fair, my, all my friends have said that they. We've they never tried to take a title off of him, though. No. So he might be completely <laughs> fucking different. Oh, I don't know, brother. Oh, man. So Ric Flair wins this, wins the belt. Herculean effort. Bobby the Brain sells this whole fucking pay per view. Oh, my God. God, I'm like, and I'm then he you, goes. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about the commentary. Man. I'm telling you, it was, it, it, it's I, you cannot beat the commentary. I, I'm going to say it right now, you cannot beat the commentary in, in this event. Not at you all. Cannot. You not cannot. At all. You cannot. And then he goes backstage and he cuts the promo the, with a tear in my the promo. Which, that starts all promos, basically. And spits in WCW's <laughs> face. Because he even says it. This title means you are the champion. So just for everybody out there, th th is WCW um, in existence right now? Yes. This was when he left WCW because they wanted to shave his head and call him Spartacus. Okay. So he took the belt with him. So he went, he, he, he was in NWA, uh, WCW, WWF champion leaves wwf yeah goes back to wcw and then comes back and i don't know how many times he did it back and forth back and forth but that's the piece of shit side of rick flair that you could say that wcw needed him though they no, needed him to go back wanted, it was all about the money right in the end it's he's a money grab he's a money grab guy he had a solid run though i mean he had that great feud with the macho man and then he dropped the belt to bret hart and then he left you think John Cena is going to crack the uh, the record? I mean, at this point, if he does, it's just because so they can make him do it. And I think, I think you know what? You know what? Do it. If Ric Flair appears on AEW, yeah. John Cena breaks the record. Yes, because I think that the animosity with this whole thing with um, that um, the plane ride from hell there and all that stuff that came on because because of that, yeah, and they, they literally were... erased Ric Flair out of the, of the history of the, of the WWE. Listen, like, he does not exist. You can't cancel the now. Ric Flair is getting pissed off about this now. And what do you do now? <laughs> what a, but you well, know what he said? Didn't he, he Sammy said, Guevara challenge him to a match? It's a promoter. It's like it's like me having the LWF and saying I have I have X amount of money. And I want to get it's pay, whoever pays will get them to wrestle, right? He'll, I could get Ric Flair to wrestle. If I had 500 grand in my pocket right now, here, yeah, Rick, he'll yeah, come. Probably. He'll wrestle. He probably owes in taxes. But that's what I'm saying. So in the end, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So money talks. So, and, but I'm like, but why Sammy Guevara in that, in that, in that, in that instance? I don't know. I'm... Why Sammy Guevara? He, Sammy Guevara will kill him. You understand? Like this is one like, thing, and I, I don't I, mean like he'll destroy him. I mean like he will die in the ring. One thing I, I understand is that like a guy like Edge, a guy like Sting, when they, when these guys come back, they fight guys they trust, right? Yeah. Why in the hell would Ric Flair, at seventy odd years of age, fight fight uh, fight, fight fight Sammy Guevara? Yeah. Not to take anything away from Sammy Guevara. You haven't done anything yet. Do you think those in wrestling? Do you think those? I'm sorry. Props, do you, think those... you haven't impressed me with the TNT title yet. You no. fought it like I don't know, man. The only thing that impressed me about Sammy Guevara was what he said about Sasha Banks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are jokes, folks. Those are jokes. That's but all that is. Let's get back to the action. Back here. to the we're action. Getting, we're getting distracted here. Do you think but... Ric Flair can still chop at this age? Oh, I'll guarantee. Yeah, it's like muscle. You know memory. what? I'm going to tell you something right now. I think Ric Flair could still go. Oh, absolutely. Should he? No. No. Because Can he? we might see a death in the ring, and I don't want to see that because I like the guy. I love the guy. His legacy and everything, but... You know what? I think he wants to go in the mat in the ring just so that if he does die, yeah, he's he, he dies he, in the ring. Yeah. So just so that it'll go on, Ric Flair has died in the ring. Bro, 43 years old. Yeah. You look at 40-year-olds now, and, and, and I'm not going to say WWE because... Most of, most of the guys in WWE, if they are over 40, they're in excellent shape. He's 43 years old, and he looks better than his fucking daughter does yes. now. Yeah. Mind you, her daughter is like 19 pounds yes. of plastic surgery. Yes. But just to say, like a guy like, I'm sorry to say, Chris Jericho, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> Lay down the beer once in a while, bro. No, he's a Vaca OJ guy. He's a oh, screwdriver man. God. No, no, no. He, 
that's that's beer belly one on one. He says, I had that exact beer belly last year. He Come says on. um he Come says on. he doesn't work out, he only does DDP yoga. Oh yeah. And, and so does uh Brian Knobs and Sags uh, from the Nasty Boys as well. Come on, stop. Stop DDP yoga. Come on, man. What are you trying to fucking I love the guy. I got the books. I got the I love him. Good friends with Joey Casada. Well, who are you lying to? You who are you come on, man. But just to say, like getting back to, I'm ripping, <laughs> back to the ripping app. Chris Jericho. What am I doing? Hey, we're back. <laughs> the um the final four. Hogan and Sid Justice, it led to um, a feud after right? their match. Yeah, but it was supposed to be Hogan and Flair at Mania, but the matches weren't clicking at the house shows. And who was it? Then it was um, Savage and Flair, Savage which and Flair. fantastic fucking yeah. match. Had a great story build yeah. up, a great match. And then he had to, then he, then he, I think Savage dropped the title to him again afterwards in order for Flair to drop it to Brett. Beating Ric Flair takes in this Rumble, man. He just takes a beating, and then every single person that comes in, and it seems like I'm one of the guys that overthinks things to the point where if a guy comes in and straight out comes straight to Ric Flair and starts chopping him, chops. I think a chop was like, if I hate you, and Ric Flair always had that chop. Yeah. And he gave a, 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 a crazy chop. So if I came up to you and like, Oh man, don't don't chop me, don't chop me, don't chop me, and then I oh, fucking chop me, and I'm gonna chop you now, and I'm gonna chop you back, and it's such a chop fest to get back at the other guy. Every single guy, oh, I think literally out of every almost everybody, let's say about twenty twenty people went straight for Ric Flair and started chopping him. Literally, just started chops, chops, chops. That's the nature boy. Because when you I mean, give when you give a chop, a, that's the way to get somebody back. Exactly. You're not gonna punch the a, guy in the face. It's a receipt. It's a receipt. Exactly. It's a receipt. And there was guys who I would never want to take a chop from. No. Haku, Rick Flair, Chris Benoit. Oh my God. Eddie Guerrero, Bob Holly, and Jeremy Prophet, and Hannibal. <laughs> And Hannibal. And Hannibal. Yeah, I don't want to take a chop from Hannibal. I don't want to take a chop from Hannibal. I don't want to take a chop from Hannibal. I took one from Jeremy Prophet. It hurt like hell. Actually, I think you said you would take a chop from Hannibal. I did say that. Doesn't mean I want to. Like if, oh, man. If he cornered me in a bus stop and was like, I'm going to chop you. <laughs> or you can't leave. The shirt's coming oh, off. Oh, man. So the way, the way this ended, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a 10 on 10. This Royal Rumble, the Royal, the actual Royal Rumble match, the match itself. Yes, yes. I mean it's got a who's who. How many Hall of Famers are in it? There's two right now in the ring: the British Bulldog and Ric Flair. Oh, cool is another guy that that's not in the WWF Hall of Fame as well. No, right? he should be. He, I loved him in uh, WCW as Ming. I was more of a Haku guy. Yeah, I was more of a Haku guy. I found I found he was a monster in WCW. But I wasn't I wasn't a WCW guy. Uh, I, I wasn't. I didn't. I, I was don't a, because I was just so loyal to WWF. Oh, uh, I was a wrestling guy. <clears throat> that I really didn't care about yeah. WCW. Like I said, I only watched it maybe a couple of pay-per-views here and there when uh, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and, and Scott Hall were there. Yeah. In that era. But other than that. Well, that's when Ming was there, or Haku. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, I wasn't I was just watching it just for them. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I only tuned in because somebody told me, like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, Scott Hall, uh, Razor Ramon and Diesel are on this channel yeah. now. What? <laughs> Or to the point where, you know what, like him or not, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. Like Hall of Fame. Bushwhackers are in the Hall of Fame. Yep. How many titles have they won? Apparently they won a lot before they became the oh, Bushwhackers. Okay. Yeah. Just, but it uh, doesn't make sense. Again, me. it's, it's who, who said it? Somebody said this, and I don't want to, I don't want to say the quote without knowing who said it, but, and I'm, I apologize because I don't remember who said it, but it's like, it should just be called <laughs> Vince's favorites instead well, of Hall of is. Fame. That's what it is. Whoever can make me that money grab, I guess, or something. I don't yeah, but there's know. people like, in there who have made him tons of money that weren't in it for the longest time. You're telling me the Macho Man never drew a dime for Vince McMahon? That's crazy, man. You're telling me when the Mega Powers exploded, he was like, "Yeah, I could have made more." Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, man. It makes no it just, sense. Just makes sense. It's just, it's just that it just shows that, like you said, it's a who's who of the favorites of Vince McMahon, and he's gonna just put that animosity behind him. And Christians you know in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying to put Chris Benoit in there, but put him in there. But as a wrestler, 
He's a piece of shit human being. Like but him or not, you know what I mean? Yeah, piece, of, piece of shit human being. But wrestler. Fantastic. If we're talking about Hall of Fame here. Listen. But you, okay, so let, let me ask you this. If he was in the in the Hall of Fame before he did that to his family, would they have took him out? It's a good question. I mean, it's a tough question. I think he would have because that's a Vince McMahon move. He took he took Hulk Hogan out. Well, he didn't take him out. They well, just he took him out, he, and then when he, he silently, yeah, he silently put him back in. I mean, Donald Trump's in there, and he had people raid the fucking Capitol building. Well, there you go, there you go. But that's his right hand man, right? That's. Oh, I mean, former owner of Raw. <laughs> it's like Trax and Runo. <laughs> this is an inside joke because they're they're very good friends. Your friend, not mine. Yours, not mine. Our. So, friends. anyways, <laughs> anyways, back to the action. Overall, this pay per view was solid. Could have done without the new Foundation match and the Bushwhackers match. But then, then what? You would have had just Jean Cruz. <laughs> you would have had literally two two matches. There's only four matches before the, the actual Royal Rumble, right? Okay, fine. Get rid of the Bushwhackers then. Maybe have like an eight man tag or something, you know? You mean just eight to... man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because fill, fill it up the time. Maybe, maybe anything. not an eight man, but like, see, this is why female wrestling is important too. What, what was the what was the state of female wrestling at this point? Non existent, non existent at all. Non existent. Well, they, they, they didn't. There was think, women wrestling. There was, but they always had that little break. Yes. So, remember, they had like the. Like the the Wendy Richter era, yes. and then it kind of fizzled out. Yes, 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 yes. And then Alundra Blaze, and then she dropped the title in the trash, and then it fizzled out again. And then you know Sable came along, <laughs> Jacqueline. Oh yes. And we had the Brom panties <laughs> matches, yes. and the numerous stink faces, and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. We're gonna have to dim these lights and have a whole a, new show. What a time <laughs> to be alive, man! What a time to be alive. But uh, one thing's for sure, we haven't spoke about these guys yet. Our great, great sponsors at 1231 St. Catherine Street West, Esports Central, where you could play games, eat food, drink. What else could you do there, Kyle? Play pool. Oh, yeah, sure. Play the pool game. You eh? can talk shit to Bruno. 50 odd, 50 computers you could play online and everything. VR. Great place. Great food. Great, great atmosphere. Um, select the brews there. Trax is always there. I'm usually there all the time uh, after I host uh, the Degenerates at Peroni's every Friday night. I was waiting for the wink. I, um, I usually show up there to have a couple of bevies. Ooh. So yeah, what 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 don't you what's there not to go for? Okay, no kidding, no kidding, okay. And if you see these little shirts here, we got Geo Press that's helping us out with t-shirts now. So if you want to do some custom orders, go check them out at Geo Press. On Instagram, you'll uh, tell them uh, we sent you. Maybe we'll give you a discount. Maybe, maybe we'll give you a discount. But some some great shirts. These are one of the shirts that we have here for Dope on the Ring. So there's gonna be some more designs coming out. Thanks to Geo Press for that. Go check them out on Instagram. And uh, I wore this because maybe IWS will give us some tickets. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> hey guys, I like free tickets. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it. I overall great pay per view. What, what would you like? I said we rated the actual. I well, I said ten on ten. Let's go realistic. Uh, the Royal here. Rumble match. Royal I would Rumble give match. It 10 on I'll 10. give it honestly an eight and a half out of ten. The pay per view. I'm gonna give. I'll give it an eight and a half. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I'll go over eight and a half. Royal Rumble nine. Yes, I'll give it an eight and a half. Royal Rumble was the. Uh, it's what everybody goes for. Yeah. It's the main event. It was the main event. Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. it's the name of the pay per view. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. And what? And that's another thing, guys. If um, guys, guys and gals, Ange, Ange TV here. Um, <laughs> if you guys want us to um, review anything for you, don't be shy. Send us a message. Yeah. DM us. Kyle's DMs are always open. Always. Mine are always open as well. Joe from the ring, Frank Joe. They're a little flooded now. You know, seven, 18 million <laughs> views and counting. So, yeah. I know it's true. You know, that's another thing. Hey, congratulations on that, man. You're oh. rocking and rolling on TikTok. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Speaking about TikTok, actually, it's uh, Instagram. Oh, Instagram Reels now. King's Instagram. I'm Kingstagram. Over if it here. came down to it, what would, what's what's the hottest uh, what's the hottest platform right now for, for me right now is Instagram. Instagram Reels, crushing eh? it. Yeah. 
good, yeah. good, good. Go read the comments. I'm getting uh, raked over the coals by a bunch of breastfeeding I know, I mothers. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> but uh, for everyone out there, where can they find you and uh, and join this journey to maybe 100 million views? Fuck. Kyle Jofo. <laughs> Kyle Jofo on everywhere. Kyle Twitter. Jofo. I'm a lot more active on Twitter now. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I see TikTok, that. I seen that. Instagram. Great. I'm. Not letting Pizza Pizza get away with the bullshit anymore, <laughs> fuckers. You can find me at Frank Jofo on all social media platforms as well as Jofo in the Ring on all social media platforms. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. And just because he's not here, J E R E M Y P R O P H E T. Did I get that right? You did. There you go. Follow him, Jeremy Prophet. My the best next friend. Big thing in Canada. And I love, honestly, I'm going to say it right now. I'd love, I would love, IWS, if you're listening, for the love of God, <laughs> Jeremy Prophet versus Speedball Mike Bailey. We need oh, to see it. Come on, man. That Come match on. needs to happen. Let's go. Here we go. You want to hear it? Let's go. Put that match together. I guarantee you, you will sell the house. Oh, absolutely. You, you get will sell the house. No, no more. Yeah, no, no. Enough now. Enough's enough. Those two together, it will burn down the house. If you're house. not going to give him back the, the the tag team titles, which he rightfully deserve, then put him in a program with Speedball Mike Bailey. Point final. They're protecting Speedball. Like I said, it's just our fucking opinion, but. And that's and that's it. That's it, folks. That's it. And last but not least, Is there anything you want to plug before you go? For like uh, comedy and um, anything you're gonna be do upcoming, guys. Um, December, January, if anything. Every Friday night, Peronis, 11 p.m. I will be hosting the Degenerate Show nice. until until the fucking t world stops. All right, I will be there every Friday, 11 p.m. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't. <laughs> 18 plus. It's it's like our it's like a nasty show. You nice. want to be there? All right. I'll so you buck fucking better be there. DM me. I'll set you up with tickets. I'm always posting. Just be there. And we want to thank everybody out there for tuning in to Joe Fool in the Ring. Support us. We're almost there to a thousand, guys. Help us out. Hit that subscribe button. Like, comment, and share. And remember, wrestling is life. So, Joe Fo. I'm a gargle shot for Kurt hitting everybody before we go. Oh no. Jofo, thank you guys. <laughs>